Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Chemical Guys Detail Garage. Now it's part two on our Raptor series. We're gonna tackle the body. It's filthy, neglected, dull. This truck is actually black, but it looks white. So we're gonna restore it today using our foam cannon and citrus washing glass. Let's get started. So today we have this Raptor. It's a Baja edition Shelby, and we need to clean it up because look how dirty it is. It's filthy, it's dirty, and it's neglected. So today we're gonna to be tuning to our foam cannon and our citrus washing gloss. So citrus washing gloss is a hyper concentrated formula that's going to knock all grime, dirt, debris that is sitting on this Raptor and restore its shine. If you guys look closely, citrus washing gloss actually splits. That is just because of how concentrated it is. So whenever you're using it, make sure to shake it up. And whenever you get this nice neon look, you are ready to go and you're ready to get to foaming or you could use it in a bucket and a foam blaster. In this occasion, I'm using a torque foam cannon. So under this, I already have my dirt traps. So before anything, let me start off by prepping my torque foam cannon. So just twist off the nozzle, put the head down, and then we always recommend filling up the water to the 900 mark, and then add soap until it gets to the 1000 mark. So open up the citrus washing glass spout, pour it in there. And the reason why I went with citrus washing glass is because I want to strip everything that is sitting on the surface. So whenever you use two ounces or three ounces in a foam cannon, in a bucket or a foam blaster, you're going to strip off everything that's sitting on your surface of the vehicle, such as glazes, sealants, and waxes. We are gonna be doing a full restoration on this Ford Raptor because we need to restore it. It's a beautiful truck to be neglected. So now that I just apply citrus washing glass to my foam cannon, I do not over twist it. As soon as it gets tight, that's it. Because Torque does supply this plastic seal. Plastic on plastic does not strip and it does not break. So just stir it, do not shake it. So now my foam cannon is set up. Now it's time to set up my two bucket method. The reason why I'm going with a two bucket method today is because one, I want to prevent any scratches and swirls on this truck. And two, I want to have a rinse bucket and a soapy bucket. So right here, I have my dirt traps. If you're not familiar with what a dirt trap is, a dirt trap filters while you wash. While you're washing, you come right here, you scrub your wash mat at the bottom. Look, it already has some soap on it. You scrub your wash mat at the bottom and these micro braces are going to cause these cones to suck down all the dirt, grime, debris, and don't let it rise back up while you're washing. So I have two different colors, a red one and a green one. Just like that, I know which is my rinse bucket and which is my wash bucket. Red means stop, green means go. But insert them at an angle to avoid Air bubbles at the bottom and it causes a permanent seal. And just like that, you enter them and you're ready to wash. The wash mitt today I'll be using is going to be the Chanel wash mitt. The Chanel wash mitt is soft, it's plush, it's going to encapsulate all dirt, grime, debris that is sitting on the Raptor. It's going to get them trapped in these noodles and whenever I come back to rinse down my wash mitt, it's going to remove everything that the wash mitt has. So like that, I achieve a scratch-free wash. So on this Raptor, since it's so dirty, so filthy, so neglected, I'm gonna start rinsing it off, then I'm gonna foam it up, then I'm gonna re-rinse it, and then I'll start foaming it again, and then I'll start scrubbing. Like this, I achieve a scratch-free wash. Because you guys come close, this dirt, grime debris is caked on here. So just imagine if I don't do that foaming, rinsing, foaming, all this dirt grime and debris when I come and start wiping my wash mitt, it potentially can scratch. So I'm taking it as a safer way, especially because it's a dark colored car and dark colored cars show everything. We want to make sure we remove everything safely and easily as possible. So this is why we're gonna do two foamings and two rinsing. So now let's head over to our buckets. I have citrus washing gloss and I'm gonna add one ounce into my wash bucket. I'll let that dwell in there. I'll start off by rinsing it off. I'll foam it, I'll re-rinse it, and I'll show you guys how to scrub it down. Let's get started. So I want you guys to come close and check this out. So I just finished doing the first rinse and this paint has no type of protection on it. The water just sticks and we don't want that. Whenever you have protection, the water beads off and it's way easier to wipe. But come close, you guys can come all around the, the entire vehicle. It's sticking on the glass, it's sticking on the paint, it's sticking on the plastics. So today, this is why we're gonna be restoring it because this paint is neglected. You guys might say it looks good because it's wet right now and it's shiny, but we don't want that. You want more beading than sticking. All around the entire truck, it's just sticking. 
This is why we need to foam it up twice to make sure we get all dirt, grime, and debris because it's embedding itself into the paint that can potentially scratch it or even damage it just forever. So now it's time to foam it up with citrus washing glass. Enjoy this montage. <music> finished rinsing, foaming, rinsing, and refoaming the Raptor. So now it's time to, to scrub it down using our Chanel wash mitt. Uh, unfortunately, I already got it wet when I activated the suds. So I'll come into my soapy bucket. I'll get a lot of suds and I go to the highest point of the vehicle. In this occasion, it's going to be the windshield because I'm not that tall. I'll get the top of the roof, but you always want to go in linear motions whenever you're scrubbing down the, the paint. Like this, you avoid scratches and swirls. And you constantly keep inspecting your wash mitt just in case if you see a brown, black from all the dirt and grime. If you do so, constantly be going back to your rinse bucket. But after two passes, I like to go to another section. So for example, I already got that side. Foam is running down over here so I could get the fender now. We always recommend working top to bottom. Like this, you avoid working double. This paint does have bee, bee poop bee pollen, there's some sap on it that does not come off with just a single wash. So this is why we recommend using a wash mill, a very soft wash mill to avoid scratch and swirls as well. So once you give it a cold pass, you scrub it at the bottom of a dirt trap, then you go outside your dirt trap and your bucket and you just wring it out. And then you come back to your soapy bucket and you follow this process around the whole entire vehicle. So make sure to stay tuned so you guys can see the end result of this truck shining up. Let's get started. So we just finished washing the Raptor. Now it's time to dry it using our Woolly Mammoth. If you're not familiar with our Woolly Mammoth, it's super soft, super plush, and it's huge. And it holds up to one gallon of water. But this paint right here has water that is dragging on it. So this is why I'll be using after wash today. It's a drying agent. And this is for anyone that has hard water, well water, or leaves a lot of water spots. If you have that type of water, I recommend picking up after wash. All you do is spray and it has carnauba in it and it's going to help you shine and dry all in one step. So you just spray it, you get your Woolly Mammoth or whatever towel you're using, in this occasion I'm using the Woolly Mammoth, and I'll wipe. But you guys can see that the paint is causing drag. That is because the paint is neglected. You see how it evaporates after? So this is why in our next video, we will be protecting the paint, we're gonna be claying it, we're gonna be polishing it, and we're gonna be ceramic coating it to bring it back to its glory and allow hyperactive water beading to be living on this paint because the more dragging, the more headache it is for the user to dry. So look, if I spray it on here, it's going to help me dry, but it's still going to drag. So this is why this paint needs protection because the water is still dragging. So how can we prevent this from happening? We have to clay it, after we're going to have to polish it out, but we need to clay beforehand because the paint has contamination. Look. You guys hear that? It's rough. That is because it has contamination from it maybe sitting under a tree, from not being driven. But I heard the driver loves to take this off off-road and you can tell by the nubby tires they're wearing off. But guys, if you guys like this video, don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up. Comment down below what truck video you want to see. Turn post notifications on because it's a full series on this Raptor. We're going to restore it to its glory and we'll see you guys next time right here at the Chemical Guys Detail Garage. Oh, I also forgot. Any of these products you saw today in this video, 
The link will be down below or hop on our website, chemwires.com or drive to your local detail garage today and pick them up today to make your life easier and make your car shine its best. We'll see you guys next time.